Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes. This um, evening I want to preach a message I have entitled Opposition Propels Promotion. Opposition Propels Promotion. And my focus is on Joseph. And before we continue or take off, let us pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for this word that is coming out of the throne of grace to encourage, to empower, to lift those who are under intense opposition. Opposition regarding their finances, their marriages, their vision. Opposition in any respect. Lord, I pray that you will use, yes, this divine truth that will come out of this message to encourage them, to enable them to stand still and see their salvation, to enable them to wait for you to fight their cause and bring them to a place of victory. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I put my hands in your hands. Minister through me. As I open my mouth, I thank you that you will fill it with divine dainties that will be a source of succor, a source of comfort, a source of inspiration. To those under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Yes, I take my text from Romans chapter 8 verse 31. And there it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Yes, my brothers and sisters, when you are in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. You need to know that your life is hidden in Christ and God. Anyone who opposes you is opposing God. And all their intrigues, all their machinations, all their ploys, all their strategies or stratagems will not only come to nothing, but in the fullness of time it will transpire that day we are working for your good, even though they were opposing you. Hallelujah. Why? Because the word of God clearly states, clearly declares, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. We must say to it. We also know. As it says in Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall sh condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. So my friend, opposition can come in various ways. It can come directly from principalities and powers. Or it can come from those around us, friends, relatives, family, spouse, church members. But we must not lose sight of the real source or origin of the opposition. It's from the enemy. Yeah. No matter the front he uses, your opposition is primarily from Satan himself who wants to dislodge you who wants to derail you, that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. We do not give in to the foe. We do not give him any bridgehead or loophole or any entry point. Why? Because we are in a spiritual warfare. And the way to outwit the enemy is to see through the eyes of God and use your spiritual weapons. And what are those weapons? 
I'll come to that in a minute. Yes, we fight. Not with carnal weapons. Hallelujah. God fights for those who put their trust in Him. Yes. And we need to learn to use the weapons that God has given us. We are not helpless. We are fortified. We are well armed to the teeth. But not with carnal weapons, but spiritual weapons. Those who oppose you, oppose God. You need to know that. Yes, that's the truth. You need to underline, reinforce, remind yourself from time to time. Second Corinthians 10, 4-5 tells us, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. So, I told you we have spiritual weapons. God has not left us empty-handed. Yes, we are well armed. So we need to put on the whole armor of God. We are told in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breast plate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all sins and my friend, in this passage we have six armaments, weapons that God has given us. And Paul in the scripture enjoins us, put on the whole armor of God. In other words, do not leave anyone out. Don your armament. And I will list them. They are the belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. However, if you look closely into this passage, you will see that there are even some other weapons that, are, that may not be apparent. Notice that all these weapons are defensive except the sword, which is offensive. Another observation will show you that they are all predicated on the word of God. The word of God is the truth, the truth that will that you know that will set you free. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes, Jesus told us in John chapter eight verse thirty two. The breastplate of righteousness is also hinged on the word of God that you know about yourself you know you are in Christ you know your right standing in Christ you know that all your righteousness self-righteousness are but filter rags your righteousness is in Christ that's why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 .30, but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And in Second Corinthians, Romans chapter five, verse twenty-one, it, it is written. No, Second Corinthians chapter five, twenty-one. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, 
that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Yes. Know that you are righteous in Christ. When He looks at you, He sees not what you used to be, but He sees Jesus. The shoes of the gospel relates to your ability and readiness to testify what the Lord has done in your life, in line with His promise, and your actualization of what He has accomplished for you, that moves others to believe your God. And Revelation 12, 11, we are told, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and that they did not love their lives to death. Glory be to God. The shield of faith has to do with your acceptance of the word of God as final authority in your, in your life and speaking that word, acting on it, standing on it, basing all your decisions on the word of God. The just shall live by faith, we are told in Romans 1.17. And Romans 10.17 tells us, so, and so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Son of the Spirit is your ability to skillfully handle God's word, to engage in a warfare against the adversary. Just like when the devil came against Jesus, when he was fasting and praying in readiness to embark on his ministry, Jesus wielded the sword of the Spirit. Yes, and... Uh, we know that the word of God is powerful, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder, divide division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a descent of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Jesus knew the power of the word, and so he wielded the sword when he encountered Satan. Satan said, "If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread." What did Jesus do? He said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. And when he was countered by the enemy, who said, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, unless you dash your foot against a stone. See, the enemy also quotes the word. And whenever he quotes the word, he he quotes this out of context. That's why you need to know your word and know it very well. So that when the enemy quotes the word wrongly, you know how to come back at him. And so Jesus came back at him and trust the sword again. It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. When Satan came back at him again and told him about the promises, about how man had fallen and giving her all his inheritance to Satan and that he had the power to give it to whomever he likes Jesus saw through the lie Jesus will not be taken in Jesus came back more ferocious away with you Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shall thou serve so what does this boil down to in regard to you, your position? Yes, good question. All you need to do is to saturate yourself with the word of God. Know who you are in Christ and whose you are and what he has done for you. And in so doing, you will put the enemy in his proper place. No, yes, tell the enemy what God is doing even right now on your behalf. Bless those who oppose you. At every opportunity, be on the offensive in the spirit, resist the enemy, and he will flee. Yes, recognize his intrigues, his evil machinations, his camouflage. And do not allow him to outwit you in any way. See through the enemy. See through his camouflage. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Give thanks to God. See through God's eyes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need to meditate on God's word. To inspire you. So that you see promotion coming at the end of your position. So you know that God is not only protecting you, but He's putting things in place 
to bring about your promotion. Yes, I want us to now examine the life of Joseph. Our focus today is Joseph. He was a miracle son born to Joseph, who married Rachel, the love of his life, after seven Laban for 14 years. He had served the first seven years with the hope of marrying Rachel. But on the night of the wedding, he was just changed and given Leah instead. Jacob had a rude awakening. When in the morning when the sun shone, after consummating the marriage, he discovered the woman under him. The woman he was making love to was a fake, a counterfeit. What? What has Laban done to me? But it was too late. <laughs> he had consummated the marriage. There was no going back. And so, imagine how he must have felt. He was cheated. Yes, it was an opposition in a way from his father-in-law. He met with the con man, the, the pre, high priest of con men. And so, we also discover that Laban cheated Jacob many times, changed his wages many times. This was opposition, in a way, financial opposition. But God used it, used every occasion to advance Jacob. To show that he was with him. Hallelujah. Even Laban admitted that God was blessing him because of Jacob. See how opposition can work for you. And so after he humbled himself in seven or seven years, he eventually had the apple of his eyes, Rachel as his wife. Circumstances seemed to continually be against him. As he discovered that the woman he loved, Rachel, was barren. She was so upset about her condition that one day she confronted him in anger and desperation. Give me a child or I die. Jacob had to tell her, well, am I in the place of God? Am I God? And so eventually, even as her, mate, her sister was popping out the children like popcorn, she was just looking and depressed. They even made fun of her. But God was working behind the scenes. In the fullness of time, that circumstance changed. God heard Jacob's prayer. And Joseph was born. Jacob loved him that he made a coat of many colors for him. He was his darling, the apple of his eyes. He could never do wrong. Whilst others went to labor in the field, Joseph was under his bosom. This triggered jealousy and hatred and opposition of his brothers. We can recall Joseph's dream as a young man. When he shared a dream, all hell was let loose against him. The interpretation of the dream was unmistakable. He will be number one in the family, the top dog in the family. Everyone will be bowing to him subservient to him. Whilst they were nursing their anger about the first dream, Joseph dreamed again. And he was not afraid of te telling his dream. He was telling them innocently, not knowing he was adding salt to injury. Whilst Joseph shared the dream innocently, he did not know. Yes, he was compounded their anger. They sought every opportunity to deflate his ego. That opportunity came when his father sent him on an errand to take food to his brothers in the forest. As he approached, they gloated, the dreamer is coming. Let us kill him and see what will come of his dream. They began to plot and they threw him into the pit, stripped him of his coat of many colors. Later they changed their mind and instead of killing him, they sold him. Those, some Ishmaelites, some traders who took him to Egypt and then they cooked up the story took his um, his coat killed an animal 
used the blood to smear the coat and then took it there to their father and uh, left him to make his conclusions. See what we saw. You make your own conclusions based on this evidence. We don't know what has happened to him. Yes. And Jacob wept and wept and wept. He thought his son had been killed. This is opposition in the family. Does this remind you of sibling, sibling rivalry in your family or in a family you know? You can find this in many families. You may have been a victim or currently a victim. You may be one of those who opposed your brother or your sister because your dad or mom loved them more than you. You can see how far such rivalry can go. And in some cases this type of rivalry can even lead to death, murder. Now how does this propel Joseph's promotion? The evidence there is the evidence in the scriptures is replete. Many scriptures that show us how a promotion of opposition can be yeah, can propel you into your promotion. So looking at Joseph, he ended up in Egypt, became a servant of Potiphar. He comported himself and did not allow the injustice and opposition that estranged him to affect his service to his master. He did not take it out on his master, but rather served him well, with integrity and excellence. He was intimate with his God and served his master as though he was serving God. This is how you are with your enemy. You need to realize that you are engaged in a spiritual warfare and refuse to use carnal weapons. The result of Joseph's attitude was altitude, prosperity galore. God blessed Potiphar's house because of Joseph and his master knew it. Joseph was favored in the house as his master left everything in his charge. It was like a governor in the house. Yes. Then came another slant of the ploy of the enemy to depose Joseph. When he saw that what his brothers did to him did not affect his service. He used Potiphar's wife to seduce Joseph because he was so handsome. Maybe he had six packs and she lost it for him. She wanted to lunge into him. Whilst Joseph went about his business cleaning the house, she must have dressed provo provocative, provocatively to see his reaction. When that failed, she decided to force him one day as he came to clean her room. She grabbed him. Make love to me. Joseph left his coat and ran away. Hallelujah. She screamed and all the neighbors came around. And she was like, look what this man, this foreigner has come to do in my house. He came to violate me. I was sleeping. He pounced on me. It was her word against his word. And they believed her. When his master came, she reenacted the scene, cried, used her emotions to convince Potiphar. She demonized Joseph. So much so that his master had to, was forced, forced to send him to jail. Now imagine a young man who had had a grandiose dream. A young man vehemently opposed by his brothers and sold into slavery. After serving his master without bitterness and prospering and making the whole house prosper, he is now thrown into prison on trumped up charges. Imagine, how would you handle this? Joseph could not be tripped up by the enemy of his soul. He always saw things through the eyes of God and refused to take it out on other prisoners. Rather he chose to be a blessing and an ex example in excellent service. He cared for the other prisoners, looked out for their interests. 
because of the way he distinguished himself, the prison warden made him an overseer of Vanuera prisoners. His fellow inmates were able to confide in him, and, count, and he counseled them and interpreted their dreams that, tr that troubled them. He did not shy away from dreams, given he was, it was a dream that began all his troubles, landing him in a foreign land and now in a prison, despite his integrity and purity. In the fullness of time, the interpretation of the dream of one of the inmates opened the door for him. When Pharaoh dreamed a dream, that troubled him, and there was no one in the land to interpret that dream. Suddenly the butler, who had forgotten Joseph, after his release, remembered and told Pharaoh, I remember my faults this day, when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house, in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream, in one night, he and I, each one of us dreamed according to the interpretation of, of his own, own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew with us, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream, and it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us. So it happened. He restored me to my office and he hanged him. And so this revelation, yes, caused the king to summon Joseph. Joseph was summoned. You see, life has its twists and turns and though it seemed that bad things kept happening to Joseph, despite his goodness, uprightness, integrity and purity. God was working behind the scene. Yes, God was working everything together for the good of the one who loved him and will not retaliate. God was building a staircase of glory and promotion from the injustice, unfairness and emotion that he faced. So when life gives you lemon, use it to make lemonade. Leave your case with God. See circumstances through the eyes of God. And when you do, He will fight for you. And you will hold your peace. He will use your opposition to propel your promotion as He did for Joseph. Joseph, the outcast, forgotten, rejected, the ostracized, became a fruitful bow, the breadbasket of the family. Rachel's barrenness opposition became fruitfulness galore in the fullness of time. God used Joseph to bless the whole family and Egypt in a time of famine. In fulfillment of the prophetic dream that came a long time ago, God used their opposition to promote Joseph. They meant it for evil, but God used it to save many lives. Yes, and in Genesis chapter 45, verse 3 to 5, Joseph reflected. When his brothers were afraid that he would punish them. Yes, he said, come. Please come near to me. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Hallelujah. Joseph has now seen through the eyes of God that yes they meant evil but God meant it for good and so you under the sound of my voice the same will apply to you if you leave your case with God what was meant for evil will be turned into good yes are you facing opposition relax rejoice give praise to God give glory to God yes know that he is working in the background, he is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Refuse to play into the hands of the enemy. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 and 27 it says, Be angry but sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give a place to the devil. Jesus prayed for those who were crucifying him. Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen also prayed for those who stoned him, laying all this sin to their charge. Hallelujah. 
Jesus saw the glory ahead and endured the cross. You too can see the glory ahead of you and endure your cross. And God will bring it to pass. God will bring your promotion. It's coming. Yes, it's coming. Look beyond the present. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You too will sit down on your throne. It's coming. It's coming. Yes, in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it is written, Therefore, do not lose heart, even though our atmo Therefore, we do not lose hearts, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding an ex eternal weight of glory. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are seen are not things which are not seen. Why we do not look at the things which are seen. But are the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. God is working. Yes, behind the scene. See through his eyes and you will rejoice in the op opposition that you face. Know that your promotion is coming like it came to Joseph. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 41. Yes. When Pharaoh's dream had been interpreted, listen, hallelujah, he said. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the, is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as descending and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine Yes, Joseph rose to power. His opposition propelled him to power. His opposition triggered his promotion because he left his case with God. Because he repaid those who opposed him with good. That is what God expects of you and I. And when we do, we too will rise to power. When we do, we too will trigger our promotion. Your time is coming. Your opposition is working for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? All things are working together for your good. If you love God, your destiny shall not be scuppered by the injustice you face, by the unfairness you face. Expect a solid turnaround as it happened to Joseph. Repay evil with good. Refuse to be tempted to take it out on others. See, yes, that what you're going through is a camouflage, is a mirage. See it as a ploy, a strategy of the enemy to trip you up. Refuse to fall into that trap. Give the, the enemy no room. See how God is preparing the stage for you. See how God is preparing a table for you, a banquet for you to bring about your promotion. Give thanks to God for the coming promotion even before it comes. And it shall surely come. It shall not delay a single day. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the Lord and you change not. Yes, you are the unchanging changer. 
There is nothing that, you, that escapes you. You are able to turn any table to bless those who put their trust in you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I leave my case with you. I thank you that my adversaries are working for me. I will not fear any evil because you are with me and helping me. Yes, thank you that you are working behind the scene. And yes, in the fullness of time, Yes, my promotion will come. I will come on top. I'm a victor, another victim. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. My opposition will spell promotion. That is unprecedented. Many will hear and many will see and many will put their trust in the living God. I thank you that you are, yes, my bulwark. You are my fortress. You are my arbiter. I leave my case with you. I wait patiently on you. You are my strength. Yes, as I wait on you, my strength is renewed. My resolve is renewed to stay focused on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I see with the eyes of faith the joy of promotion ahead of me. And I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, he's a faithful God, powerful God, who is like unto him. What God is like him? He is merciful, he is majestic, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering, abundant in goodness and in truth, and our blessing. Yeah. That's the Lord of my soul, as He is within me, as He is home. Oh, my soul, all that is within me, as He is home. Oh, He's a faithful God, powerful God, merciful God. I will trust Him. He's a faithful God, powerful God. Mercy for God, I will trust Him. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. It's a faithful God, powerful God, mercy for God, I will trust Him. It's a faithful God, powerful God, merciful God. I will trust Him. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His oh, holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His oh, holy name. It's a faithful God, powerful God. Mercy for God, I will trust Him. He's a faithful God, power for God, mercy for God. I will trust Him. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His oh, holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me. Bless His oh, holy name. Yes, bless the Lord of my soul. He's wonderful. Yes, he forgave my sins. Yes, heal me of all my disease. Yes, he rescued me from the domain of darkness, from the pit of hell. He crowned me with love and compassion. He satisfied my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord of my soul. Bless the Lord of my soul. All that is within me. Bless his oh, holy name. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love towards me. As far as the east is from the west, so far is removed my transgression from me. Bless the Lord of my soul. All that is within me. Bless his oh, holy name. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Angels of the Lord and camp around those who fear him. Righteous may fall seven times, then he rises again. Many, yeah. Weeping men endure for the night, the joy comes in the morning. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
He said, faithful God, a powerful God. He said, faithful God, a powerful God. He said, faithful God, a powerful God. That's the Lord of my soul. Give glory to Him. He is wonderful. He is excellent. He is glorious. Yes, He's marvelous. Bless the Lord of my soul. He's a faithful God, merciful God, powerful God. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual warfare. But the battle has been won by the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the book, it says we won. Hallelujah. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent takes it by force. It's a spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, it's a spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, pull the enemy in his proper place. Put the enemy in his proper place, and his proper place is under your feet. His proper place is under your feet. Put the helmets of salvation, the spiritual warfare, the bedplate of fruit, the spiritual warfare, the shoes of the gospel, the spiritual warfare. Breastplate of righteousness, spiritual warfare. Take the shield of faith, spiritual warfare. The soul of the spirit, spiritual warfare. Thank God, Thank God Jesus has won the victory. Thank God Jesus, Jesus has won the victory. The victory at Calvary. The victory at Calvary. Been done all since. Stand your ground, haven't done all saints. Stand your ground, haven't done all saints. Stand your ground, haven't done all saints. Stand your ground, having this armed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them, even through the cross. Now, thanks be to God who leads us in triumph in Christ. Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation, let be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God, they're pulling down our strongholds. It's a spiritual warfare, 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 it's a spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, put the enemy in this proper place, put the enemy in this proper place, and this proper place is under your feet, this proper place is under your feet, put on the helmet of salvation, spiritual warfare, the fresh blade of fruit. Spiritual warfare, the shoes of the gospel, spiritual warfare, the breastplate of righteousness, spiritual warfare, take the shield of faith, 
spiritual warfare. The soul of the spirit, the spiritual warfare. Hang God, Jesus has won the victory. Jesus has won the victory. The victory at Calvary. The victory at Calvary. Having done all sins, stand your ground. 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 It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. Put the enemy in this proper place. I say, put the enemy in this proper place. And this proper place is under your feet. This proper place is under your feet. Put on the helmet of salvation, spiritual warfare. The belt of truth, spiritual warfare. The shoes of the gospel, spiritual warfare. The breastplate of righteousness, spiritual warfare. Take the shield of faith, it's the spiritual warfare. The sword of the spirit, the spiritual warfare. Hang of Jesus has won the victory. Hang of Jesus has won the victory. The victory at Calvary. The victory at Calvary. Having done all saints, stand your ground. 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 Spiritual warfare. Thank God Jesus has won the victory.